Okay, Econ John here. I'm going to try to teach intermediate microeconomics in five minutes. Here we go. In your standard intermediate microeconomics course, you'll learn about budget constraints and cost functions, utility functions and production functions, the Lagrangian multiplier, finding Marshallian and Hicksian demands, cost minimization and production maximization, tangency conditions like the marginal rate of substitution and marginal rate of technical substitution, the Slutsky equation, and profit maximization. In consumer theory, we're first exposed to the budget constraint, which relates how consumer income is connected to the goods he or she can afford. The budget constraint is defined as M equals P1 X1 plus P2 X2, where M is income, X1 and X2 represent good one and good two, and P1 and P2 are the prices of good one and good two. This could be generalized to having a budget constraint, which accounts for multiple goods, which is M equals the summation of PI XI, where I goes from one to N. On the flip side in producer theory, we have cost functions. They're just like budget constraints and they relate how the total costs are related to the inputs the firm can employ. Cost functions are usually represented as C equals W1 X1 plus W2 X2, where C is our total cost, W1 and W2 are the costs for input X1 and X2 respectively. Cost functions can be generalized to account for multiple inputs, where C equals the summation of WI XI, where I goes from one to N. There are also three main utility and production functions introduced in intermediate micro. They are complements, substitutes, and Cobb-Douglas as listed on this slide. When solving for the optimal consumption or production set with complements, we consume or produce where alpha x1 is equal to beta x2. When solving for the optimal consumption or production set with substitutes, we consume or produce with the good or input which can provide us more overall utility or output. For example, if alpha is greater than beta and prices are constant, we invest all our resources in X1. However, in the case of Cobb-Douglas type functions, we need to use a tool called the Lagrangian multiplier, where L is equal to F of X1 and X2 plus or minus lambda G of X1 and X2, where F of X1 and X2 is our objective function, G of X1 and X2 is our constraint, and lambda is our multiplier. In intermediate micro, we also have to solve for Marshallian and Hicksian demands. When we're asked to solve for our Marshallian demands, we're trying to find the utility maximizing bundle given a fixed budget constraint. And when we're trying to solve for our Hicksian demands, we have to find the cost minimizing bundle given a fixed level of utility. So to solve for each one of these really depends on how we define our objective function and our constraint function in our Lagrangian multiplier. In our Marshallian demands, we, our objective functions is our utility function and our constraint is our budget equation. For our Hicksian demands, our objective function is our budget equation and our constraint is our utility function at a fixed level of utility. To solve for this, we take the partial derivatives of our Lagrangian with respect to X1, X2, and Lambda and solve where they are equal to zero. In consumer theory, we learn about the Slutsky equation. The Slutsky equation tells us that changes in demand for a product can be broken down into price effects and income effects. The Slutsky equation can help explain some of the oddities seen in consumer behavior, like when spending on a good goes up when its price increases. To solve for this result, we must know the Marshallian and Hicksian demands for each good and differentiate them accordingly. Moving on to producer theory, we have production maximization and cost minimization. It's pretty much the same thing as solving for our Marshallian and Hicksian demands, except now we're using production functions instead of utility functions and cost functions instead of a budget equation. The math is the same. When solving for the optimal consumption bundle in consumer theory, we solve where the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the price ratio of good one and good two. The marginal rate of substitution is defined as the ratio of marginal utilities. If we have the utility function u of x1 and x2, our marginal rate of substitution is the derivative of our utility function with respect to x1 all over the derivative of our utility function with respect to x2. The tangency condition and utility maximizing bundle can be found where the marginal utility from good one all over the marginal utility from good two is equal to the price of good one all over the price of good two. As previously discussed, just like in consumer theory where we are looking for the utility maximizing bundle, in producer theory we are looking for the cost minimizing bundle. This bundle can be found by solving for our marginal rate of technical substitution and setting it equal to the ratio of input prices. If we have the production function f of x1 and x2, our marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to the derivative of our production function with respect to input 1 all over the derivative of our production function with respect to x2 or the marginal product from input 1 all over the marginal product of input 2. The tangency condition and cost minimizing bundle can be found where the marginal product from input 1 all over the marginal product for input 2 is equal to the price of input 1 all over the price of input 2. In producer theory, we also solve for the profit maximizing set of inputs. To do this, we use the profit function, where profit is equal to revenue minus cost. Revenue here is defined as price times quantity as defined by our production function. 
this is an unconstrained optimization problem. So we just take the first partial derivatives of our production function with respect to x1 and x2 and solve where they are equal to zero. And that was intermediate microeconomics in five minutes. Like this video and let me know what you thought.